So I'm going to start you guys off with a poem that I wrote about 9-11, the people who jumped at 9-11, speaking as them. Okay, it's called Jumpers. Crowding into broken windows, trying to enjoy the feeling of the cool autumn breeze as it touches our flesh once again, as if we had already known it would be our very last, accidentally being pushed out by others who yearn for the last breath, Looking up into the sky and search for the sun. Only hope before a way out, realizing that this is not a dream. That this is a horror I never thought I would see. It's like watching one of my worst nightmares. The smoke as it blinds us, divides it, attacks us, the heat it surrounds us. It's all really happening. The floors beneath us collapsing in way to the flames. Now who are you choosing? The head of the tail. Fly from the broken windows and perish to the flames of smoke. There's no escaping. Your whole life it just became paper thin. Being forced to make the decision alone is an act of torture. So don't do human out to the grave. Don't say we jump. It's calling suicide to say they jumped. We were murdered whether we jumped or not. We are not cowards just because we jumped. In fact, it took more courage to jump. In spite of the hope of release from the heat, sitting the ground rushing up at you 150 miles per hour, knowing it's not gonna stop until it pulverizes you, Feeling the organs in your body gathering in a high spot as the downward velocity increases. That alone make the most hard beyond expression. That's not cowardice. But if you're ever at ground zero, you can still hear the whispers of our voices trying to tell the story that we were not able to tell for ourselves. They were us. And God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I also like to educate you guys on a word. If you guys don't actually know this word, the word is Nagoose. I was taught by the people in my school. I was part of a program called KHK Kids Helping Kids at my school. They, they said that they were part of poetry. They, they teach you their true definition of hip hop and stuff like that. So then one of the teachers in that classroom is a leader of an organization called the Goose, the Goose World. So he taught us, he taught all of the children in the classroom this new word called the Goose, which means in the Ethiopian language of Amharic, um, it means king, and the geese means queen. It's basically a word that was taught, like, was, was us before we were slaves. Because in schools, they don't teach us that. Like, I'm, I'm a student in college right now, and they don't teach, when I was in middle school, they did not teach us in middle school that we were kings and queens before we were, we were slaves. They only taught us that, oh, we were slaves and that, that's that. We just was taken away from our country and that's that. The truth is we were really kings and queens. And I really believe that we should teach our children, our kids, the younger kids, that they, they are kings and queens no matter what. So I'm not trying to ban the word nigger or anything because that's basically what he said too, that when he taught this on to me, he, didn't, he said that we're not trying to ban the word nigga. That this word, this word is, to replace, is not to replace it, but it's an alternative. Like we don't have to call each other, each other nigga because we know where that word came from. Like I'm looking at these pictures in this room and you see all these slaves and they were tortured and murdered by being called that word at the same time. Their last breath was being, hearing that word being called to them. So it's like, you know, we were called this word, what we are are kings and queens, the geese and the, and the goose, you know, that's what we are and that's what I really want to leave you guys with tonight. Great. Thank you.